Today we're going to make the zigzag sofa. The design for the sofa consists of structural frames that are made from 2x4s and 2x10s, which are then covered with 3 quarter inch thick plywood. I will be posting dimension drawings of this project on my website. The most critical part of this project involves cutting 3 quarter inch thick plywood with an angled blade. I used a circular saw to make all the cuts, but a table saw might be a little bit easier if you have one. I used a pencil and ruler to lay out the design onto pieces of 2x10 and then use my circular saw to make the cuts. For these types of cuts, I actually prefer the smaller battery powered circular saw. Even though it's not quite as powerful as a corded one, it's lighter weight and it's easier for me to follow the lines. I used the first pieces that I cut to mark the lines on the 2x4s. But if you have a miter saw that can cut at 20 degree angles, that might be a little bit easier. I used a little bit of construction adhesive in between the pieces before I screwed the frames together. I used a level to make sure that the top part of the frame is parallel to the floor before driving the final screws. I used the first frame that I made as a template for aligning the pieces of the second frame. I had already made initial angled cuts on the pieces of plywood, but I waited until the frames were done before doing a field measurement and doing the final angled cuts. I used a straight edge and some clamps to make sure my cuts were straight. The weights are just to keep the plywood from moving on me as I make the cuts. I want the frames to have a nice matte appearance, so I covered up all the screw heads with wood putty. Once the putty was dried, I sanded it flush. You can do this all by hand, but an orbital sander makes it go a little bit faster. I painted the frames gray with a nice bare paint that has a matte finish. I screwed the pieces of plywood to the frame one at a time using two inch long finish screws. I started with the pieces for the seat and then did a test fit for the piece that will be the back and the countertop and I found that I needed to sand down the frames just a little bit to get a perfect flush fit. This project is relatively simple in that there aren't a lot of pieces to it, but it's kind of important to get all your cuts as accurate as possible, and doing some extra field measurements is probably a good idea. I was designing this project on the fly and sort of figuring out what it needed as I built it, and I realized near the end that I actually needed some extra back supports, so I just cut some more 2x4s and then screwed them in place. Once everything was screwed in place, we used wood putty to cover up all the screw holes. I used an orbital sander to round over the edges of the plywood just a little bit so that nobody gets splinters in their calves. We then sealed the plywood with a coat of Minwax Polycrylic. I ordered some pieces of foam online. I'll put a link to where I got them in the description box below. I got two large pieces of leather from my local Tandy Leather store. Now Jesse and I don't have a lot of experience working with leather, so we just tried to figure out what would be the easiest way for us to make a cover for these foam cushions. If you know of a good tutorial for making leather covered sofa cushions, feel free to link to it in the comment section below. But here is the super easy way we did it. We just punched some holes along the piece of leather. Fletcher was visiting at this time, so he came over for a quick inspection. We then pounded in some brass grommets to reinforce the holes. We then used some string to lace up the cover like a giant leather burrito. This was a really easy way to cover a piece of foam and it actually looked way better than I thought it would. Initially I was a little worried about people leaning on the counter part and tipping the sofa over when nobody was sitting on it, but a little bit of testing showed that that middle frame was doing its job in providing sort of back support. The sofa is super comfortable and I'm really happy with the dual functionality of the design. It would be the ideal sofa for having a bunch of friends over to watch the big game and it's roomy enough to have three in the front, three in the back. For more detailed instructions, including dimension drawings, be sure to check out my website. And if you want to see what I'm working on next, follow me on Instagram. That's where I post project updates and generally share what I'm working on next. We also have other videos that show different designs for DIY sofas. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Congrats, you made it to the bonus section of this video. We actually took the scraps left over from cutting the frames and used them to make a nifty little side table that fits right next to the cushions.